God of the universe, maker of the stars, who am I? Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Life on Purpose. We've got Mike Clayton, we've got Daniel Clayton, and of course, we have David Covert <laughs> and myself, Ryan Cribs, and we're so excited to be oh, back. Yes. Uh, once again, talking some topics with you guys. Uh, this is starting to feel like one of those, uh, you know, just kind of when we get the chance, usually in person, to sit around. Uh, mm -hmm. it's more rare than than not but sit around and kind of discuss some of these things so uh, it's like y'all get to be a fly on the wall and just kind of listen to us cover uh, some different topics and so forth and mm -hmm. share some opinions and so forth so this has been a lot of fun y'all yeah i would agree sure. i agree and uh we're gonna have two of us actually together in um in uh loose loose dale mississippi i've never loose been to dale. loose dale mississippi but I'm really looking forward to it. So Daniel and myself will be at River of Life in Loosedale in uh, June, or excuse me, in January. Yeah. What day is it? What month is it? What year it is? I don't know. Uh, we will yeah. be there on January 14th. We're actually going down to record on Hebrew Roots Network. It's going to be six episodes, it looks like, as long as um, our voices and brains hold out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll be in Loosedale. There's going to be a We'll do a, yeah. a a regular service, and then we have scheduled a young adult meeting in the afternoon at Loosedale. So that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I finally figured out the reason that the first this first session is just Dad and I. It's because they ain't ready. No. For oh. for David and Ryan yet. So that's, that's oh, why. Wow. <laughs> so we gotta oh, go see, like I you see. know kind of we gotta go prep some stuff so that it's nice and ripe for you. Oh, that sounds man. good. Y'all are going to yeah. knock it out of the park. We have no doubt about that. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Looking forward yeah, to this it. Yeah, this has been awesome. You know, it's just a, having a chance to, you know, talk about these things that we cover and, you know, just have mm -hmm. nice, real conversations. I mean, it's been it's been a brain stretcher for me. That's for sure. Especially every time Ryan talks. Like, <laughs> just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, no, yeah. no, that's good. I mean, is, it, David, it. you know, not to say that you don't have anything good to offer. You know? No, of course not. Of course not. No, we've been we've been having some great topics. And I think that, yeah, Ryan's is bring, bringing out some great stuff like this. This I mean, session every time done David talks, oh. I get happy. Like, I just get joyful and energetic. Yes. That's, yeah. that's just what I happens. You. Like, you guys have said this before, too. Like, we've had these. I know that I've had plenty of conversations with y'all in the past. Like, this is what it feels like to do these sessions, because it's like we get to finally sit down and go, oh, like you said, right, we're now flying on a wall of a conversation that we're having. That's what it really yep. feels like, because I know me and Ryan will have late night talks where we just talk about something uh, that's either bothering us or whatever. And I, I definitely tell you, all if you guys ever have someone that you can trust to talk about mm -hmm. those things with, it's so worth it. Because Man, it's cheaper than therapy. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Especially I'm when your bots a... rolled in. You but can... you better find the right person to talk to or else you'll have to go get therapy. And then it's not you right. into that. Right. Exactly. Then it's more expensive because you have twice the problems. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> a lot of problems. You come in with your problems and leave with somebody yeah. else's too. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's right. Yep. More baggage to carry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. When your luggage turns into your baggage. <laughs> See, that's never yep. good. Yep. Never, no. never, never. Hey, I got a question for you guys. Uh, mm. I, something I've been pondering, you know, uh, thinking about oh, no. we, we were <laughs> we were considering about the the holiness of uh, of Yah of God, and um, I, I just you know trying to imagine one hundred percent holiness. Mm. You know, I mean that that concept itself. I, I, I was uh, in thinking about this. It's like you know, you 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 get the the Lysol or the uh, you know some wipes or something, or mm -hmm. or uh, you know you buy a, an ounce of silver and it's like you know ninety nine point nine percent pure, or mm -hmm. kills ninety nine point nine percent of germs. I've always I've always really wondered about this. You know, what is that point one percent? What is that thing? You know, this COVID is what? No, I'm just kidding. No, oh, man, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I looked at the back of the bottle, Ryan. Okay. I know, I know. 
It says it kills COVID. In fact, it, it said it killed COVID it before kills COVID existed. It kills 99.9% of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. It's so, that 1% that'll get you. It is, is that 0.1% of something, you know? Uh, there's, there's always something impure in this world. But with mm-hmm. God, with the creator, he's like not... He, he's not 99.999999 percent pure. He is 100 percent pure. Mm-hmm. Yes. How, how do you even wrap your head around that one? You know, it, I, I can I've come at this from a couple different ways, and one of them, uh, when you think about it, for me, uh, one one of my hobbies is is casting bullets. Mm-hmm. And there's an interesting thing that happens when you are dealing with molten lead. And that is that you have to add something to it that will cause uh, excessive heat uh, and create carbon, for instance, so that it grabs everything that shouldn't be in there and brings it to the surface so it can be scraped off. So when it talks about being refined as gold or silver, it's the same way. You would add in like candle wax or sawdust, that kind of thing. And that creating fire on top of the the surface of that and then being stirred in and burn up gathers all the other impurities. They come to the top and you scrape it off, Mm. right? It's called fluxing. Mm. Well, we have a creator who can neither be added to nor taken away from. You cannot add anything to him in order to to flux the process, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it, it is a little hard to imagine, but yes, he is that that hundred percent pure. Mm-hmm. Nothing can be added to, nothing can be taken away. Okay. I, I like what you say there about that because then the, that that scripture verse comes to mind of uh, neither take away for neither take away from or add to right that whole mm-hmm. idea he can't be it's 100 percent. so that that first comes to mind really really heavily but then there's rules then regarding okay how do you approach that which is 100 percent? because it's pretty clear we cannot be 100 mm-hmm. percent without him we cannot be so you have there's some per- certain procedures to do when you're approaching holiness every time the people are in the wilderness right there was a procedure to approach and usually involved really denying yourself, really cutting out all the fluff that usually you get to do in your life. It's like, don't do this, don't do that. Like these things don't do. And then when we see, like I, I'm always reminded of when it talks about holiness is uh, tabernacle temple procedures where you can be and where you cannot be. And if you cross into that trespass over those thresholds, it's death. Mm-hmm. There's no ifs, ands, buts, questions about it. It's death, period. They don't even, there's no trial. It's just death. <laughs> it's like, don't, they're not even, there's literally people watching and they're waiting for you to do that. And if they you see you do that, they're immediately coming after you. And I think that I'm thankful for God's mercy. That's one thing. <laughs> I'm definitely thankful for that. Um, Cause I think that sometimes in our zeal of wanting to know so much, we might even uh, maybe even do that. I wonder. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have much on this one other than, you know, being being human and mm-hmm. not 100% pure and much, 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 much less than that. You know, it we don't have the capability to fathom the idea of 100% pure. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you, we can describe it the best we can, but it's just like, because we're not even in a, we're not even pure enough to understand it because like that's, you know, how perfect and everything that he is. And so, I don't know. I'm, you stumped me on that one. Okay. Uh, Ryan, as, as was said, I mean, when uh, you, 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 to me, you're kind of like the old EF Hutton commercial. Uh, when EF Hutton speaks, people listen. And uh, Ryan, you got, you, you answered something that uh, has been, has been, through over 30 years now how do i describe this how do i describe the blood shed of yeshua and um, you you put it in such very simple terms as this um so let me go let me back up a little bit that we discussed to a a few weeks ago in when we started the series 
for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, of Elohim. So all have sinned, which means that we all have taken the impurities of sin into our lives. Yes. What we discussed last week, for the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. The gift of the gift of God is is eternal life and Messiah Yeshua. So what you just described in the making of a bullet is that you put flux, some kind of a, a you put some kind of a uh, an, another element into the metal, and that draws out the impurities. That's right. So That's when we take right. when we take our life full of sin full of impurities, and we submit our lives to the blood of Yeshua. That blood draws out the impurities of our mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, it's interesting, too, to, to add on to that as well. You can cast, without fluxing, you can sometimes cast a perfect-looking bullet on the outside. Mm -hmm. What the impurities do is they add or take away weight on the inside, which means no matter how well built and well sighted in the rifle may be, the bullet is going to sin, which, you know, the definition of sin is mm -hmm. to miss mm -hmm. the mark. Yeah. Miss the mark. Yeah. Though it looks perfect on the outside without being fluxed, it in and of itself cannot fly straight perfectly. So, mm. so Ryan, did you just describe the difference between religious activity and the true blood of Yeshua? Mm -hmm. That's right. I think so. In a very and, redneck fashion, but yes. <laughs> casting, <laughs> right. In casting both. I love well, it. redneck is usually unorthodox, but effective. So oh, Southern wisdom. <laughs> Yes, amen uh, to that. I also find it, since we're going to run with this analogy, I think that this analogy is a fantastic use of this because I was thinking the same thing, Ryan, that whole missing a mark because like you you taught me a little bit about the your hobby of uh, casting bullets and I, I have appreciation for that. I also find it also fascinating that heat. Heat has to be used to do that. And if, you've, if you're listening, if you've never experienced what fire, like holding your feet to the fire feels like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I think that uh, in life, you go through these moments where it's like your feet are being held to the fire or your entire, is everything is just not working out right. God's trying to draw some stuff out of you. And sometimes that heat is brought yeah. in so that it can be brought forth and exposed. And it's not fun. It never is fun. Mm -hmm. So, but when you're launched from that, when he launches you, you're going to be dead on if you submit to that process. That's why I would love to, that, to add to that analogy. Fantastic mm -hmm. analogy. I love it. Absolutely love it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we kind of walked through um, a recent season of that refining and yeah, still still in it. You know, we should always, always be refined, but, you know, we just kind of had a, you know, me and my family, uh, just kind of a more intense season of, of that refining. And what I realized is that, you know, beautiful analogy works so well, but I realized something new about it, that, um, you know, that gold, that silver, that whatever it is, when it's being refined, it doesn't really know it's being refined. All it knows is, ouch, <laughs> like <laughs> all it knows is fire and pain and more pain. And, you know, it's just like, you know, you don't always see it when it's happening. You just see the pain. You get these like little glimpses of what yeah. it's going to be like, but you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. And so, you know, I kind of want to segue here um, because, you know, I think that, you know, dad, how you were kind of summarizing where, um, you know, the blood of Yeshua is that flux that draws out of us, um, you know, those things and purifies us. I, I have a question. It's my turn. Um, so who I'm, I'm asking all of you this. So, are you a sinner? Yeah, I'll I'll go first. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. 
I see I'm your. Gonna, uh, we're gonna step on some religious toes right here. We're gonna uh -oh. step on them and yeah. just just you go just, for it. I mean, bust you just called me at my own game here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah, that no, one made it to the ground. So you know, I was I was having a conversation yesterday with someone about this, and it was just this really interesting moment because. You know, we walk through these verses that we're walking through right now. The first one, you know, all have, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, you know, sin, the wages of sin is death. And the next one we're looking at is, you know, Romans 5, 8. Mm -hmm. But God demonstrates his own love for us and that the Messiah died on our behalf while we were still sinners. And so I was having this conversation and I was like, so if the wages of sin is death, yet we have been saved from death through the blood of Yeshua, we can no longer have the title of sinner. It, do, it doesn't work. Like, I, I don't think it works, you know, because, you know, it, it's like, it's almost like a doctor, you know, they have like, you know, these letters behind their name, like, you know, so-and-so, PH, you know, PH, uh, yeah, PhD. PhD. whatever the letters are you know there's like 10,000 different ones you can put behind there even though there's only 26 letters but um but it's like you know I am not you know because the messiah's blood has covered me and I am no longer for death I am not Daniel Clayton comma sinner I'm Daniel Clayton comma redeemed there you, go. you know mm -hmm. it just because and even in this verse, the Messiah died on our behalf, our behalf while we were still sinners. It has a past tense implication, mm -hmm. where there there has been it, it implies a process that has taken place. Like you know, my wife sent me a text while I was at the grocery store. It doesn't apply when I get home. You know, there's been a change of location, and and so don't get me wrong. Like mm -hmm. I am Daniel Clayton, imperfect person who sins. But I cannot be titled, I don't think, as a sinner because I do not have the wages of sin anymore, which is death. I like that, Daniel. I've got something to, to actually kind of prove your point there. That word while, when it goes into where it says, uh, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Messiah died for us. That while uh, in Greek means the ordinary state of existence. So that would mean that when he died for us, our ordinary state of existence was as sinners. Yeah. But then if we continue down to verse 10, where he says we were reconciled, mm -hmm. that mm. word there, uh, reconciled, let me pull it up here, I wanna do it justice. It means uh, to exchange as coins for others of equal value. To change against anything, to exchange, to change a person, to reconcile to anyone, it implies a mutual change and refers to many. Uh, it says, so to act that the opposite party may lay aside their enmity. So mm -hmm. to your point, he's literally changed out our identity and exchanged it for an identity of value that's justified. Mm -hmm. And it has, a, I, I think, you know, it has a lot of weight because this conversation I was having was like, I could see the light bulb go off in the person. You know, it's like, it was like, you know, they were saying, you know, when I do something wrong, when I sin, it's like, that's the first place my mind jumps to is I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm, you know, all these things, it jumps to the negative. Whereas, and so it, it really matters, you know, as far as like how you define yourself and you define your identity and all these things, like if that is the first place you jump to, then it's going to be more of a definition on your life than the redemption factor you know that's right where you know where now maybe it will be you know this person sins or does something wrong and instead of jumping to i'm just a sinner it's like you know 
I have sinned, but the blood of Yeshua covers me and I can conquer this. Well, you know, th- this goes back to uh, you guys have been around when I've done the, the covenant message. <laughs> I, I think uh, Ryan, you and David could probably mm-hmm. do it in my voice. <laughs> so many times. But it's about that exchanging of robes, the exchanging of names and all those things. And uh, when I'm, when we're in um, Loosedale, that's actually the message I'm planning on doing. But uh, this goes back to something that I've uh, I kind of thought about. Uh, it's been quite a while that God is not as concerned. He's not really concerned about your behavior. And that, you know, mm-hmm. causes most people to start, wait, wait a minute. You, you, you need, he doesn't, it doesn't matter what I do. No, I didn't say that. He's not as concerned about your behavior as he is your identity. Mm-hmm. Because your identity will drive your behavior. I may be able to change your wow. behavior for a short amount of time, but it's probably not going to last. Herein, we're yeah. at uh, January 2nd, and most New Year's Eve resolutions have already been broken because that's yes. behavior. But if I can change yeah. your identity, if I can get you to see yourself, and, and Daniel, you know how you said that, um, you know, if, if we see ourselves as sinners, we're going to sin. But the scripture in Messiah the, the scripture calls us Zadokim, or the King James would translate it as saints or righteous ones. So we are righteous in him. He has exchanged those bloody minstrel cloths for a robe of righteousness. And to use your word of reconciliation, Ryan, he called it a fair exchange. Yes. Yeah. Now, if someone would like to explain to me how that's fair, I'm all ears. I mean, not literally, but you know, I'm I'm listening. God's mercy, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but now let's let's take it to another another place here. Why is it that the gospel in the the good news, which is the the coming of the kingdom, the reconciliation of sinners unto God? Uh, the forgiveness of sin, all of those things. Why, why in the scheme of things did Messiah have to die? Why was there sacrifices? And why will there be sacrifices again? I guess that's, that's for another program. But why is it that Yeshua had to come and die? Couldn't there have been, I mean, kind of an easier way? So uh, go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, a couple things here. Uh, and one of them, in kind of studying this verse, to back up a little bit before I go to this, the next part of my point here, in studying this verse, I kept coming across um, these pastors uh, or Bible scholars that would say that Romans, uh, specifically uh, chapters five through eight, is Paul sort of apologizing uh, for the damage that the Torah has done. And now that we're out from under the weight of it, uh, because of, of Yeshua, Jesus, uh, and we can now be grafted into the line of Abraham through faith. Right? Right. Which we know is not the case. Um, and so to kind of answer that as well, why did Yeshua have to come? If we back up to Genesis 15, we'll see why he has to come on the scene. And it actually has to do with Abraham. Mm -hmm. So it says Abraham is put to sleep, right? He's told to to cut apart these different animals, different Mm -hmm. species, put the two halves across from each other, right? And then he's put to sleep. Now, why is he put to sleep? Because, and, you know, for those of you who've heard Mike's message on um, covenants, you're already probably, you know, jumping up and down. Uh, going, I know, I know. Uh, for those of you who haven't, this is typical Middle Eastern custom. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called cutting a covenant. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that you'd have two parties that would go through uh, and they would stand there in the blood. I won't go into all the details, but they would basically say, may this and worse, talk, speaking about the, the severed animals, happen to me if I break this covenant. Yeah. 
And so we see Abraham being put to sleep and we see two entities walk through these pieces. And one of them is standing in for Abraham at this point. We see a smoking furnace and we see a burning torch. So we understand who these pieces are. We understand why Messiah has to die. It talks about how uh, when the uh, during the Exodus story that the father descended on the uh, Mount Sinai and the top of the mountain smoked as if a smoking furnace. So we know that the smoking furnace is the father. Well, who do we know is the lamp unto our feet, the, the burning torch? It's Messiah. Yeah. So you had Messiah come in and stand in for Abraham, make a covenant with the father saying, may this happen to me and worse if, and already knowing the, what the outcome is going to be, if the descendants of Abraham should break this covenant. And so there we have in this beautiful picture, Messiah standing in for Abraham and all his descendants, us. And so that's why he had to come because he had to pay the price. It was required of him at that point. But there we also see grace and the story of Yeshua and the mercy of the father all the way back in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, <clears throat> go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, the question, you know, why does there have to be death to produce eternal life? And, um, you know, I think we can, I think we can strip it down to a very simple example in that literally for us to live, there has to be death. Yeah. Like every time we eat anything, whatever we have eaten is dead. You know, whether it's a vegetable or a fruit or specifically an animal, like all of those things, when they were severed from the plant, the tree, the bush, you know, or they were the animal just, you know, killed or slaughtered. Um, you know, there was a death that produces and sustains life in us. And so, you know, it's just, it's just a really stripped down example to say, like, it's, it's something that, yeah, we, maybe we question, but there's also just a very simple side to it that, you know, in order for life to continue, there is death on a continual, endless, uh, you know, just circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David? Yeah, I was going to say like the, uh, that point that we're talking about with death and how we're talking about Genesis 15 and further evidence of this too, because whenever they were, they came up to the Messiah, Jesus, Shua, that I have not come, I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Those who have been cut off, those who had their sins have waged, the wages of their sin have yielded them that they're cut off. That's who he's after, which is just, seeing that just blows my mind that that's knowingly knowing that that's going to happen and choosing to step in regardless anyway mm -hmm. is just a love that not a lot of us can ever really know and maybe maybe we'll be uh it talks about how late like you talked about that romans verse that we're we we're talking about romans 5 how uh considering that someone should lay down his life for his brother is mm -hmm. like oof. again that's a love that's a that's a depth that's something that is unbelievable so I think you're right on Daniel about death and how there's always is death, no matter what in life, death must be there. It's just, there's life and there's death. It's just, you can't just have life. You must also have death with it. You're right. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me, let me put a couple of scriptures in, and then I want to come back to David, what you just said there. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 61 uh, toward the end here. Um, I think it's verse 10. I am so joyful in Adonai. Um, my soul rejoices in my God. For he has been, clothed me in salvation, dressed me with a robe of triumph. Now, in in to to insert a, a Hebrew word here, a couple of uh, Hebrew words. Um, well, let me just use the one. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in Yeshua. The word Yeshua in Hebrew means salvation. You guys know that. Maybe mm -hmm. others out there don't. So he has clothed me in Yeshua and goes on in chapter 62, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem, Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out brightly and her Yeshua like a blazing lapid. The word is torch and her salvation like a blazing torch. 
So this ties right in, Ryan, to what you were talking about with the covenant, that we see yes. that torch in the midst of the covenant. Hmm. So hmm. Let, let's yep. go. I want to go, uh, David. Let me throw this back to you because this is one of the verses I had uh, written down today to uh, to talk to about the verse in uh, in John chapter fifteen. No greater love has anyone than he would lay down his life for his friends. Mm. And and the word friends, of course, is a covenant relationship term. It, it's yeah. not the friend on Facebook. It's a covenant relationship that you have entered into with another person. No greater love has anyone. So the ultimate proof of the ultimate love is that a person would lay down his life for their covenant friend. Mm. Therein is the, the purpose of the shed blood of Yeshua. That there was no greater, and and we see that in in Messiah, uh, I like to say it this way: is God Himself was having an embodied experience. Hmm. Uh, the the cre creator of the universe entered into His creation in order to affect hmm. the situation of His creation, and there was no greater way to show His love than to lay his life down your mm. thoughts you're right i think that i would love to bring up that again when you talk about covenant i'm so excited to see how other people are going to respond to that same teaching in loosedale mississippi again guys gotta make that trip down there um if you're around the area definitely get there um you talk about david and jonathan right two people that have grown up in totally separate lives mm -hmm. But there's this exchange that happens. And again, I love it when you bring people up and actually show how that exchange process looks. And when that happens, then you realize from that point on how they interact differently with each other. It's not just, oh, yeah, today in a Western mindset, it's just, oh, yeah, so and so. Yeah, we talked. And yeah, that's not the kind of friendship they had. This was, mm -hmm. no, you're welcome over at any time, which is like against every Southern rule in the book. <laughs> Right. There's certain <laughs> procedures you must follow, right? So realizing that you are literally at almost as if like a marriage of one flesh in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense. That's what it is. I think that marriage would be like the next level up, but it's literally that. You would consider their life more than your own life. I think maybe it's the better way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. You would consider their life. To realize that Back then, relationships were like that, right? Rela this was like relationships would get to this point where this was the ultimate form of a relationship with somebody was this, right? This and marriage. That's like the ultimate form. Today, we hardly ever see this kind of relationship of we're going to put our life over then. But we see it in scripture all the time and reminded of it when we see that the side die for us. We see that. So I think it's very hard for us not to realize that death, and we're not, we hardly ever see death, right? That's Western, our Western culture has done a very good job of trying to go, oh yeah, that doesn't exist. You get you, like uh, the classic joke of, uh, uh, oh, like why do people like want to go kill something to get the meat? They just go to the store, right? Yeah. That whole idea of being disconnected yeah. from understanding that in order to have a hamburger, something had to have died to have that. Or like Daniel put it, you actually had to like a vegetable, you're eating vegetables. Guess what? That plant is dead. They had to kill that. They had to basically kill that plant in order to get that and then replant seeds for something else to grow later mm -hmm. on, right? The same idea. We do that over. This cycle just continues over and over and over again. So there is no way that we're going to understand God's love because it's yeah. that, that um, I love what one person said that as far as the East is from the West. East and West never cross each other in this planet. They never do. So there is no way to understand how much love he has for us and how his plan was set in motion from the beginning that maybe even destiny. We keep talking about like he sees you and it's even why we even do this program. He knows exactly why you're in the position you're at. He knows exactly where he's going to take you. And he knows that in order for you to achieve it, 
lovingly lay down his life so that you could be a part of this covenant and then send you forth with all those impurities up so that you'll hit the mark, that you'll be right on the on target and not miss. And if you do miss, guess what? You just go through the cycle of extracting mm-hmm. impurities again. <laughs> like you said, the season, like Daniel, you said the season of, uh, uh, of refinement. <laughs> I think yeah. I think I've said something similar. It's, they hurt. It doesn't feel good. But God's love is with you the entire way. That's what makes it bearable, I think. That's what makes it really bearable, that love. Yeah. And I think, you know, the Bible is so amazing that, you know, there's, it's endlessly complex and it's endlessly like amazing where, you know, people literally spend their entire lives studying it over and over and like that is their profession. And they still come up, you know, they literally have only scratched the surface. And, and so it's endlessly complex. And at the same time, it's a paradox because it is made simple. Like, you know, it says in the word, you know, in Deuteronomy, like, you know, it's not so far out that you have to like, you know, say who will cross the sea and go get it for us or go up into the sky or whatever. You know, it's like, it's at our fingertips. And so on one hand, it's endlessly complex and it's very, very simple. And so I think this, uh, this question of why does there have to be death is almost the same way. You know, there's this, this aspect of that question that is endlessly complex. You know, there's this, the section where, you know, the wages of sin are death and, you know, that, that curse is upon us and, you know, there's all these reasonings and there's the covenant and it's just really complex in one way. And, you know, there's the, but Yeshua covers us in that way. But then there's also the strip, you know, not, not, not the strip down, but then there's the simple version of, you know, when someone makes an outrageous comment to you, like, Hey, you know, I got, I got $5 million in the bank. You're like, prove it. You know, there's a, there's a prove it thing. You know, I, you know, I I got a fish that was this big, you know, prove it, (laughs) you know, that classic thing. Um, And so, you know, here Yeshua is saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, I have come to set you free. And what does humanity say in one way? Prove it. And so the simple version of why does there have to be death is be- is that Yeshua laid down his life to prove everything he said, you know, like, like the disciples when they were sent out to do the healings, like, you know, he was, they were sent out to preach Yeshua's message and the, the power of miracles and all this stuff was to prove his message. Yeshua, his proof of his message was his death and resurrection. Mm-hmm. Into that. I also think I wanted to throw this in there, like what you're talking about, that this whole idea with the, especially with death, I, I can't, the verse is escaping me and then maybe we might be able to find the reference for it, but there's this other idea of dying to oneself. Mm-hmm. It also comes up a lot and I, it's almost like preventative measure before you realize that, oh, I've messed up because it's usually implying putting your pride to death, putting your uh, own needs that you think that your own needs are like, oh, this is so important. You you die to those things and say, no, I'm actually going to give those up. Like fasting is considered like a, a way of doing that. Baptism is a way, right? There's other examples of putting oneself to death saying, nope, I'm actually going to deny myself because I'm actually trying to seek out the father. I think there's also that that sort of comes into it, but again, it's not as important as this, the, the overall arching idea of death in the sense of actual actual death. There's actually that emotional or uh, uh, spiritual death. I think that every new believer goes through, especially dying to oneself, that you were a man of this world, like you brought up, Daniel, the whole idea of labeled sinner. Now it's redeemed, right? Dying to oneself saying, no, I'm done with all this. I put my life before you and say, have, like, w- send me. Where are you going to, like, if there's no one, send me, right? Like we talked about Isaiah, same thing. I love that part. Uh, my hat, Yeshua, I don't have with me right now, but it actually says on the back, here I am, send me. And I think that's just one of the most amazing things. And I'm walking out the door and that's that hat's on there. It's amazing. So that idea of dying to oneself. Yeah. I don't know right. if you've noticed my email address, David, it's, that's, that's the word. Yeah. Any. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So I think that we have to also, that's a, a, a reminder. You have to always remind yourself put myself down first and we put someone else's needs above my own 
is also a nice constant reminder to humble yourself in the middle of that. I think that's what he's also implying in Romans we've talked about there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan? Well, and once again, we find ourselves covering uh, such deep topics, uh, sometimes such a great um, weight and seeming gloom, in a sense, speaking of death. Uh, but we must remember, because of what Yeshua did in laying down his own life, for those of us who follow him, it says death has lost its sting. And so, therefore, we see further the weight of his love, because not only in this lifetime has he redeemed us and called us justified and exchanged those filthy garments for garments of righteousness. He's removed the very penalty that we were to receive mm -hmm. so that then we can also spend eternity with him. Mm that is is almost beyond comprehension and like you said mike begin to try to understand that uh, if somebody can explain how there was any value to the father how that's an equal exchange i'm like you said i'm all ears <laughs> the, yeah. it, there comes a point and this is called faith guys it, it's just called mm -hmm. faith when yeah. i come to the place that I no longer can understand something. Um, I, I coined a phrase a number of years ago that um, uh, regarding regarding truth and understanding that, um, uh, our, and I can't remember exactly how I said it, but there comes a point in which I just say, I don't understand this, but yet I accept it. See, faith does. Um, we talk about, people talk about blind faith. Mm. Faith is not really blind. Mm -mm. Um, so, some of the greatest vision I've ever had is when I walked in faith. You know, we go back to the book of, uh, of Matthew, when the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh came upon Mary or Miriam and uh, said, you know, you're going to have a son and you're going to name him Yeshua. And, you know, we, we know the story. That's you know, the, the, the very familiar story. And Mar Miriam said to, said in the midst of this, um, or, or to the angel, you know, when, she, when he, she was told the Holy Spirit shall come upon, him, upon you and you shall give birth and she's a virgin and, you know, that doesn't happen very often. Um, and so she says, how is this going to be? Hmm. Well, you know, that's when he says, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of, butchering the this thing i could have gone back and read it a lot better but uh, that's when the angel says the holy spirit's going to come upon you and you're going to be with a child you're going to you're going to have a child even though you've never had a relationship with a man and miriam says be it unto me according to your word it's like okay i don't understand how this is going to happen but i i guess that you've got it down and God's got it figured out. So, Hey, I'm, you know, buckle in, I'm on for the ride. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, kind of to change gears back to the verse, um, you know, the Romans five verse, you know, it would be, it would be, uh, I, just, I, I want because he would have been waiting a very yeah. long time. Okay, Daniel, you froze up on that for, for on my side. So say it again. Okay. I don't want to miss the fact that it, Yeshua does not wait for us to be perfect. He did not wait for humanity to be perfect for mm -hmm. us to be saved, for him to save us. He stepped mm -hmm. in while we were still sinners, while we were still mm -hmm. away from God, you know, and you know, it's just, it's important to remember today, like, you don't have to be where you want to be to start moving to where you want to be. You don't have to be, you know, Billy Graham to start your walk with God. You don't mm -hmm. have to be 
right. you know, Paul to start your walk with God. You know, God accepts you as you are while he pushes you on the path to where he wants you to be. I like that. It's about progression. It's not about perfection. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's, that's good. That actually, uh, I had pulled up this quote that I like, uh, that I was going to read. And then you said that, and it ties perfectly in, Daniel. Uh, it's by Charles Spurgeon. Many of you know who that is. Yeah. He says, do not sit down and try to pump up repentance from the dry well of a corrupt nature. It is contrary to the laws of your mind to suppose that you can force your soul into that gracious state. Take your heart in prayer to him who understands it and say, Lord, cleanse it. Lord, renew it. Lord, work repentance in it. The more you try to produce penitent emotions in yourself, the more you will be disappointed. However, if you believingly think of Yeshua dying for you, repentance will burst forth. Oh, my goodness. I love that so much. Mm, like awesome. that's so good like you know because there is that human thing like okay i just need to sit down i need to focus i need to like you know really focus on this repentance here but you know he captured that so beautifully that we can't do that mm-hmm. you know we can't you know it's it's ineffective to look at the darkness within us in order to be brought into the light it's so much more effective to just look at the light and let it shine in on the dark you know I love that quote. That's Ooh, so good. In a way that Daniel is actually the same idea. We can't be looking at our demise, our death. We have to look forward to like we are redeemed. We have to look for that light. We have to look towards that idea. Again, like we that's I didn't expect this episode to turn into like a recap of uh the of the five questions, right? But it literally, who are you? Right. It's literally kind of wrap around back to it. So it's the same idea. Who are you? Are you going to be looking towards your fallen state? Or are you going to be looking towards, oh, well, I'm just going to be a sinner and stay a sinner. That, that dead thing, right? That's what you, that's what really, that's what you're talking about, Daniel, that whole idea mm-hmm. that are you a sinner? That means you're just looking at yourself saying, I'm just a dead person. Instead of mm-hmm. at, look, raising your eyes, realizing that you're being redeemed by his love and all this amazing stuff we've been talking about. That's where our eyes need to be focused on. That's what we need to be looking yeah. towards and not in perfection. God's never looked for the perfect person right mm-hmm. never has been never mm-hmm. been i don't think yeah. it ever will be i think only messiah was perfect but still mm-hmm. so, ryan i don't know if you were done but you just got me all excited so no I- that that was it that was it <laughs> and that goes right back to with what both you and uh you daniel and uh, you dave uh you were hitting on what mike was saying earlier it really comes back around to identity mm-hmm. if you can realize what your identity is then your entire direction will change. Well, you know, he says, yeah. uh, th- th- Paul said this, uh, I know in whom I believed. He didn't say, I know in what I believe. I know in whom I believe. Mm. Okay, yes. so I, I, I want to tie, I want, Ryan, I want to tie you and David together in something that uh, you began with this whole thing about, uh, you know, it, this is probably one of the first times that the gospel and the molding of bullets has ever been pulled together in a, in a, uh, uh, in a program. And that's fine. You hear it here first. Um, but you, you talk about the, the impurities there. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how you add an element. And when you add an element, I'm going to use David's words here. The impurities interact different with the metal. Yes. So when the blood of Yeshua is brought into our lives, it means that we interact differently with God. We interact differently with others. And we interact differently with ourselves. That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. That's exactly. I would right. even say that we we interact differently with sin, as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like because you know, God is a He's a God of unity, but unity has to become unity from division. Mm-hmm. Like in order for us to be unified with the Father, we have to be divided from sin. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
we recognize what is separate, right? We recognize what is a part of the division. We recognize that sin is that division, is that separation. Mm -hmm. And when you're joined in, you go, well, why? I think that's why the Bible verse two of like return to your first love, right? Mm -hmm. When you were like, usually people, when they come into being believer, they're just so on fire, they're just so ready. And then the allowance of death to, to enter into their life, the allowance of when hard things come, sometimes I'm not going to make an excuse. I know that it's, it's crisis of faith is what I'm really implying here, mm -hmm. but everyone goes through that. And if you're going through it personally, then please reach out to us at a, a life on purpose at mail.com. Okay. Got it. it. Perfect. I want to make sure I got that. Please reach yeah. out to us because, uh, um, other than Mike, uh, we've all gone through crisis of faith. So <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we've all, that, my correction, yeah we've all gone through a crisis of faith and maybe sometimes even multiple times it's okay that idea of what is god real that's why we're talking about these things because mm -hmm. when we talk to other people that and it varies in age ranges it doesn't matter it doesn't hit at one specific age that it doesn't it's all over the place so if you're experiencing that please reach out to us we can just sometimes you just got to change your perspective and then all things make sense and it's just it's I came out stronger in faith after that than I ever have. And I guarantee everyone here that has gone through it understood that it made them stronger with believing in, in, in our heavenly father, even more so oh, yeah. than ever before. So I wanted to tie that in because it's, it's a nasty, almost like a nasty sickness that comes on you. And it's awful. Well, there's a, there's a reason the word testimony has the word test in it. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, I mean, it's just kind of, it's just there. We go through these tests. This is what life is. I, I, I love the the saying that uh, I. This is this one's older than you guys. Uh, life is a battleground. It's not a playground. That's right. And and it's literally yeah. a battle for the soul of mankind, including your own. So if we would treat it as such, now yeah. uh, th this I, I won't. I want to go back to one more thing as we're about to run out of time. Uh, these commentators that were talking about that uh, chapters five through eight of Romans were kind of an apologetics for the scripture uh, or, or apologetics for, you know, Paul saying, well, the Torah is, you know, it was, it was a bad, evil thing. Uh, here, here's the problem in, in, in kind of bringing things out. Uh, in Bible school, you're taught three very basic principles is that everything is about context, context, and context. And That's the right. next thing they normally do is take something out of context. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> you know, Brad Scott, uh, of blessed memory, someone that was very dear to all of us, uh, Brad used to say that to look at the context, you need to look at the cha uh, two or three chapters prior to and two or three chapters after. And I agree with Brad's concept there, except for this. I, I'd like to take it a, a different place. That when we when we look at context, we should begin at Genesis and end at maps. Mm. That's right. Okay. So everything has to line up. So for those that would have this problem, uh, I, I want to read Romans chapter 3, verse, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 31. It says, does it follow that we abolish the Torah or the law given to Moses? Does it follow that we abolish Torah by our faith? Heaven forbid. On the contrary, we confirm the Torah. That's right. Now, it, it appears that Paul actually read the book of Rome, uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Huh, what a novel idea that would be. Mm -hmm. uh, Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 27, verse 26. It goes, you guys go back and look it up. It says, uh, a curse on everyone who does not confirm this Torah by obeying it. That's right. Con context is important. Um, it absolutely is. I'm reminded, actually, of a uh, of a story. It was a some new Bible scholars, and they were studying the book of Exodus. And they got to where Moses was there and on the, all the children of Israel and the Red Sea was parted, right? And there happened to be an atheist among them. And he said, well, I read that part. And, and you know, we did some archaeological study and so forth. And Turns out at that time of the year, that wasn't that great of a miracle because the Red Sea was only about five inches deep. 
Well, the whole place went silent, and pretty soon all of the believers, they just started jumping and shouting again and screaming hallelujah and so forth. And he said, well, what can y'all be shouting about now? And they said, well, if that's the case, that means that the Lord drowned the entire Egyptian army in nothing but five inches of water. <laughs> that's great. He's that's got awesome. his, He's got it covered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Man. All right, guys. Closing thoughts tonight? I'll jump in first and say that uh, real quick that uh, I think you were talking about this, Mike, but uh, talks about Deuteronomy towards the end. Choose life. Mm -hmm. You have the option, choose death or choose life. And God's commanding you, choose life. That's like I leave you guys with. Okay. Yeah. Go make bullets. It'll teach you things. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I love it. There you go. All right. Well, you know, uh, if anybody wonders, does does God really love you um, in, where you are? The uh, In the book of Revelation, it says that Yeshua was slain before the foundations of the earth. So before the earth was created, the provision for the fall of man was already there. And before the fall of man, the Almighty had this. He knew the plans that he has for you, for good and not for evil, to give you to give you life, purpose, a future, and hope. So live your life on purpose. Perfect. See you guys next week. We'll see you next time. God of the universe, maker.